So, uh, probabilities, any gamete produced by an individual that is heterozygous for a trait has a 50% probability of carrying the dominant allele and a 50% probability of carrying the recessive allele. So, if you have a parent that is big A, little a, then there's 50% chance that egg is going to have a big A, 50% uh, chance that that egg is going to have a little a. 50% uh, chance that the sperm is going to have a big A, 50% chance that the sperm is going to have a little egg. So uh, the way that they are separating and then the way that they come back together um, is all a game of chance. So if you have a male that is heterozygous for, I'm not sure if it's al albinism or albinoism, I've always said it, albinoism. Um, if a male is heterozygous for albinoism, big A, little a, and a female is uh, homozygous for albinoism, little a, little a, uh, what is the probability that their child will be homozygous for albinism, little a, little a? Um, I believe that it is a 50% chance. Yes, 50% chance. So here we've got our mom. Uh, she is... Uh, homozygous recessive, little a, little a, so her uh, eggs all are going to have little a's in them. That's the only thing that can possibly come from mom. Uh, if you've got a dad who is big A, little a, then his sperm could have a big A or a little a. So that's a 50% chance that you could have big A or a little a. So if you multiply those together, we have that 50% chance of the offspring having both a little a from mom and a little a from uh, dad. So um, if we change those parents around and we had a different combination of genotypes, there would be different probabilities of having different offspring. But I wanted to give you at least this one example. Um, if you look at the disease Tay-Sachs, which is a um, which is a deadly disease. Um, if you have parents that are both carriers, and this is one of those examples where people might go in for genetic counseling before they decide to have children, because if they know that uh, somebody in their, um, in their uh, gene pool, in their uh, parents or grandparents or cousins or parents had Tay-Sachs, then they would want to find out what the chance would be that it would be passed along to their offspring. So you could have two perfectly uh, normal adults who are heterozygous for Tay-Sachs. So they both have uh, one dominant and one recessive, one dominant and one recessive. If you have two uh, normal parents or parents without Tay-Sachs, um, the, there's a 50% chance that mom could pass along uh, that little T and there's a 50% chance that dad could pass along that little T. So there is a one-fourth or 25% chance that the child could be homozygous for Tay-Sachs and then have that disease. So um, that is where the disease shows up even though neither parent um, has that disease. So one of the reasons why genetic counseling and uh, genetic testing is becoming much more prevalent in our uh, population. So here we've got one with, uh, with alligators. Um, if we were going to test cross to find out what the genotype of this dad is, we know what the genotype of the mom is if she's albino. She has to have those recessive, uh, re uh, recessive genes because if she's albino, they both have to be those little letters. And if we have a dad who has pigment, he could be either homozygous dominant, so have uh, big M, big M, or he could be uh, heterozygous dominant, so big M, little m. And so we don't know what he's going to give. We know he's going to have at least one big M, uh, but the unknown allele could be a big M or it could be a little m. So when you cross these together, uh, we get uh, these two offspring that are going to be big M, little m, so half of them here. Um, and uh, if we end up with the albino, uh, the albino allele showing up, then we know that this father has to be big M, little m, because there's no way you can pass along a recessive characteristic um, unless you have it in your, uh, in your genes. So uh, if we have offspring where uh, we've got the albino showing up, 
then we know that he is uh, big M, little m. But if all of them are uh, pigmented, then uh, most likely we've got big M, um, big M, big M, um, because they're all going to have the uh, big M, which is the dominant pigment color.